Hey there, welcome to my studio here in New York City. I'm Daniel Norton, and today we're going to talk about bouncing light versus using a more directional light source. So we all pretty much know, right, that soft light is what we want when we make portraits, right? Well, maybe that's a question for another video, but let's assume that we want soft light for our portrait. In order to do that, we're generally making our light source larger. You know, you've got a small flash, it might be, you know, three, four inches in diameter. That's not going to make a soft light for a portrait. So we want to make it bigger. And the way we do that is we're going to either shoot it through something like a piece of silk or put it inside of a soft box, or we're going to bounce it off something like an umbrella or maybe just a mounts board. Both of these techniques will make our light source bigger relative to the subject because the diffusion becomes the light source, the bounce board becomes the light source. These bigger light sources will create a more flattering light on your subject. So which one do we use? Well, we're going to explore it a little bit. I'm going to make a couple of portraits here, some using a softbox, the two foot by three foot softbox, some using a two foot by three foot bounce board. We'll use the same light, but we'll use them in different ways and we'll see what creates the kind of portrait we want for today. This is not to say that one of these techniques is better than the other. It's just that they're different. And by looking at how they're different, you can choose what's best for your portrait shoot. Okay, so the gear for this one is gonna be super simple. We're gonna use a Profoto B10 as our strobe light. I've got a roll of Savage paper set up behind me just for a real simple portrait. It's gonna be a one light portrait so we can see the difference between these sources. Obviously, once you've decided what kind of source you wanna use, you can add whatever other lights you want to get the style that you're looking for. But for us, for this demo, we're just gonna stick with a single light. So I'm gonna start with a softbox. This is a Profoto OCF softbox. It's two foot by three foot. And essentially what this is going to give us is obviously a soft light, right? It's going to give us some control on the edges, which we'll talk about, and it's diffused, right? We're shooting the light through the diffusion. Now, in order to kind of match that as much as possible, what I decided to go with instead of like a pop-up reflector or something is just a simple bounce card. This is a piece of foam cord board. It, board, it is white, or it was white before it got dirty. It's also two foot by three foot. I figured keep the size the same so we can have as close as possible to uh, the same setup. We're gonna pretty much leave the position of the light the same and we'll kind of play around with the two and see which one we like better for this particular portrait. All right, I got my Marissa here. And nice and simple, again, just a one light shot to kind of show you the difference here. Once we have this established or once you have it established however you want it, you can add extra lights like hair lights, background lights, stuff like that. We've gone over that in many other videos. You can put some links here. But basically, I just wanna show you the difference between a bounce source and a direct source. So we're going bounce first. Again, this is a two foot by three foot foam cord card. You could use a you know professional reflector, one that you can buy like that you know from a photo store. What you're going to get if you do that is more consistency in the color and the cleanness of the light. So if you're going to do this a lot, you might want to make a little investment there. But foam cord cards are great as well, and they're relatively inexpensive. So. This one is two by three, so the same size as a softbox, which is why I'm doing this. I just have it mounted on a C-stand. My light is bouncing into it. I'm gonna turn the modeling light on so you guys can see. Okay, so basically there's some light hitting the ceiling and stuff too, but essentially I've got this covering the entire card. That's what we want. We want the modeling light to cover the whole card, so we don't wanna put it too close, and we don't wanna, you know, so they don't cover the whole card. You don't wanna put it too far back so that the light goes everywhere, right? We wanna maximize our light, so. And effectively, this becomes our light source. Right, because what's happening is the light's bouncing here, this is lit up, and this is what's lighting Marissa, the card. So what we're gonna get is nice light that's gonna spread out. She's, I don't know, five feet from the background, gray background, so let's see what this looks like. Okay, frame it up, take a picture. Boom, I'm in TTL. So as always with TTL, we're gonna take a look, see if we like the exposure. I think this looks a smidge on the dark side for me. Um, when I'm looking at the histogram over here, See where this number one is? That's right around the place where I like Marissa's skin tone to be. And when I look at it, you can see it's a little bit, it's right there, but it's, some of it's a little bit on the darker side. So we're gonna go just a smidge up. So what I'm gonna actually do here is just switch to manual, which we typically wanna do when we're making a portrait. Once we're set up, we switch to manual. I'm gonna give it three tenths of a stop of light. We'll take another shot. Look, so this looks nice. This is where I like it. You can see actually, that the background is nice and evenly lit. And I guess I didn't do this. We always do this in the live streams. If you guys watch the live streams, um, I didn't do it here, but I will because it's important for you to see that that background looks nice and even. And you're thinking to yourself, well, yeah, of course it's a great background, but if we turn our flash off and we make an exposure, nothing, right? So what do we have here? We have a single light source 
that's giving us a nice even light across our subject. And we also have the background lit up fairly evenly. It's a smidge darker than it is to your eye because obviously it's further than Marissa from the thing. But let's just shoot a few like this and we'll see what we get. So this kind of light, reflected light, whether you're using an umbrella or using foam cards like this or some kind of professional uh, reflector like a, a Shamira frame with a fabric or scrim jam or something like that. These are great for when you're doing groups or when you just want kind of even light. And I say groups because that, that's what you want, right? When you're shooting a group shot, you want the light to be even across them. So having a nice even light, you don't necessarily care if the light's hit in the background. We don't want a lot of control, a lot of mood. It creates kind of a nice even light. And it's, you know, two foot by three foot at this distance is pretty soft. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Pretty good. We don't want to, you know, <laughs> go too far into this. So let's take a look here. We can see if you wanted a round, ca round catch light, because I know people always comment about that, you could use a round piece of reflector, right? Um, like I have the, the Lassa Light uh, Halo is great for this. Small, round, it would make a nice look. But again, I wanted to match the softbox. All right, want to go for the other source? Cool. Okay, so I've swapped the reflector with the softbox. So we're going from a bounced light or reflected light to a more directional light or direct light. And, but they're both going to be softer right? because I'm shooting the directional light through a sheet of diffusion, essentially the front of the softbox, right? And that sheet of diffusion is going to uh, make the light source the front of the softbox, which is two foot by three foot. So we're, we're roughly the same. I've got it more or less in the same position. I've got it horizontal, about the same distance, about the same position. We'll probably move it around as we go because you're going to want to position it the way you want. But I just want to show you kind of apples to apples, as they say. Uh, so, you know, there we go. Let's just take a shot. I'm in TTL. Yeah, and we can see that we got beautiful light on her skin. You notice a couple things. It's a smidge dark, which we had that with the other uh, thing as well. I feel like TTL makes Marissa a little bit darker than I like her to be in the pictures based on my preference. So I'll give it a little bit of boost, but we notice that it's a little bit warmer. That's because when you shoot through diffusion, you're going to affect the color on some level. The bounce card may have been a little bit on the cool side. This is a little bit on the warm side. I think this actually looks more accurate um, to her skin tone. So that's good. <laughs> it's good when your softbox is accurate. Um, and we can see that while both of them created a nice soft light on the face, what we've got with the softbox is the background is much darker, right? Because it's because of the angle of the softbox and because of the fact that the light is kind of contained within it, it's not going to put as much light on the background. And we can use this to our advantage. Number one, if I'm shooting this kind of portrait with her, I'm probably not going to necessarily keep the box horizontal. But even if I did do that, I can use the fact that the softbox kind of edges off to give myself a darker background, for instance. So I could take the softbox and swing it this way. This is called feathering. And I'm going to leave it in TTL for now even though I did say that we're going to switch because I want to get the proper exposure. This light is really shooting past her and we're going to catch her with the edge of the light. And again, which is often called feathering. And we can see now the background is even a smidge darker and the light on her is really pretty and even. If we wanted to get the background completely dark, for instance, what we could do is move the light closer to her, which we wouldn't really be able to do with the reflected light as much because you need that space, right? If I'm using, whether I'm using a card or an umbrella, I need the space for the light to be to then shoot forward and bounce back and then come forward. So this light can always be closer. I can put it much closer when I'm using a directional light. So let's actually do that. Let's take this in real close. And again, I'm in TTL. So I'm going to keep it more or less in the same position. I'm basically feathered. I'm now like a foot from her. There you go. And we can see that the background is much darker, almost black, right? And we can, and what we're going to get here is the ability to kind of control our space. We could move her further from the background because we have space here, but you might not where you're shooting. So this is going to give you some control. If you were to put, let's say, a grid on this, which I don't want to do because that would be very unfair, um, you could have even more control. We could really get it. She could be really close to the background. We've done that in videos and stuff. So the idea here is that we can get a very similar look with reflected or with directional light, but reflected light is going to give us kind of a big open feel so that we can do things like shoot a group or have the background be evenly exposed. Whereas directional light is going to give us more control of where the light falls. So this is a, even though I used a foam core card here for to kind of size it up correctly, this is really the answer to the question that people often had. What's the difference between an umbrella and a softbox? These are the differences. Now, just because we're here, let's shoot a few with the dark. Okay. 
reflectors. And of course, in both cases, you could add reflectors and do whatever it is. got very interesting series of images right that are I'm trying to find something similar I guess here you're looking forward that are the same but different right same Marissa <laughs> same background same light technically but different modifier kind of different angle on it and we're able to create a variety of different looks can you get the background darker with the reflected light sure if you can kind of feather it off you're just not gonna have as much control so if you want to have more control, something like a softbox is going to be a good option for you. If you want to be have more open light, something like bounce cards or umbrellas are going to be better options. And you'll choose whichever one you need based on the project that you have. Cool. Want to look at them? Yes. Right. Let's take a look. <gasps> wow. You're so talented, Daddy. Think. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Oh, look at that. See, she knows that. I like how I have to adjust with the shows the long nails. So I she's... know. <laughs> I was inspired by Erica. Nice. 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 You know what? I think I like the somewhere in the middle best. Like the, the ones that were there, right? Those ones. I think I want to pull the light back and do more like that. Yeah. Yeah, because I actually like that kind of darkish background, but not super, super dark. Oh, for I see you. what you're saying about those. Yeah, right? Yeah. This is a little bit flatter because the background is not dark, so you're not popping out as much. But again, you can add separation lights and stuff like that if you like. Nice. Yeah, let's just do a couple more. I'm gonna pull the light back where we had it so I can get the background, a little bit of light on the background. And then we'll finish up. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, there may or may not be videos posted on the side of this video. It is legally in my contract that I have to say that I'm posted on the side. Okay, anyway, thank you for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications about future videos. <laughs> so awkward!